Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and a very happy new year to you all. I hope you had a really good New Year's Eve and are excited to be in 2014. But before we get started with this year, I wanted to do my 2013 beauty favourites. And if you haven't watched one of these videos before, it's basically all my beauty favourites from the whole year. So it was a bit of a mammoth video. So I'm actually going to be splitting mine into two parts. This video is going to be body and fragrance, skincare and nails. And my next video, which is going to be on Sunday, is going to be hair care, makeup and extras, which is like tools and brushes. I'm also not doing mine by category. So I'm not doing my favourite foundation, my favourite concealer. I've just listed everything that I've loved from this year and I'm just going to throw it into a video. If you've watched my videos all year, then you're going to recognise most of these products. So I'm not going to talk in too much detail about them. But if you are new to this channel then this is basically all my favourite products from the whole year and I hope you find some new products to love too. I still love so many of the products I mentioned in my 2012 beauty favourites video so instead of repeating those again I'm just going to list them all in the description bar so you know that I still love love those products and if you think wow why didn't she mention Bioderma that's why because it was in last year's video and all the products will be listed below, so go down there and check if you want to find out more about any of them. So first up are my two favourite perfumes from this year, both fig related. Jo Malone Wild Fig and Cassis, which is beautiful, I absolutely love this fragrance. I've already finished the 30ml and I'm onto the big size. And Diptyque Philosicus, they're both very similar, I think Philosicus is a bit more green, but I absolutely love fig scents. In my bathroom for my hands, I've been loving the Rituals Hand Scrub, it is incredible, it gets rid of any dead skin and your hands feel so soft and smooth, so I use that pretty much every night. And my Aesop Resurrection Hand Wash, I've had this for like pretty much the whole year and I still haven't finished, it's huge, so it's such a good deal, it looks pretty in your bathroom and it's just a really, really nice hand wash. My favourite candle has been the Diptyque Bay Candle, I love this scent. I have the room spray as well. It works all year round. It's just really fresh and comforting and delicious. It smells like my other favourite Diptyque perfume as well, which is just so beautiful. I really like this scent. All year I've had these on my bedside table and it's the This Works Deep Sleep Pillow Spray, which is a nice lavender scented pillow spray to help you get to sleep. And the This Works Deep Sleep Stress Less. And this is a rollerball. It's really nice to put on your wrists or behind your ears. I like to take this on planes with me if I'm travelling and it just keeps you calm in any situation and smells really nice and also helps you sleep. In my shower this year I have been loving the Soap and Glory The Breakfast Scrub and this pretty much smells like the name. It smells like maple syrup, it's so delicious and so thick and exfoliates really well but it's not too harsh and these are really affordable so this is definitely my favourite scrub of the year. And the last two from Body and Fragrance for the bath. The first one will come as no surprise and it's the Aromatherapy Associates Relax Deep oil and this one's actually finished, I've got another one upstairs. I love these bath oils, you only need a cap full and it just fills the whole bath and the whole room with this amazing relaxing scent and I always use this in my evening baths, it's just amazing. I've also loved the Rock O'Neill Therapy Himalayan Detox Salts, I love Michelle Rock O'Neill, she is an amazing therapist and these bath salts that she created are just, they're like magic, they can send anyone to sleep. They smell kind of funky but they literally make you just go straight to sleep after your bath. They're amazing. I don't even know what's in them, but they work. Okay, on to nails, and I have quite a few favourites from this year. First of all, the YSL nail polishes, and I discovered these this year. They are, of course, in beautiful packaging, like all YSL makeup. But I really, really love the formula and the brush and everything about these. I've got three shades here. The cap just pulls off, and it's got a little brush, and it's got a really thick brush, so you hardly need any strokes before you've covered the whole nail and I think the shade range is lovely and I definitely recommend YSL nail polishes. I also love the Barry M Jelly Nail Polishes that were released this year. They are super affordable and the formula is like a gel, so it comes out really thick, lasts a really long time and looks really nice and shiny on the nails. They've also got amazing shade range, so if you are really into nail polish but you want something a bit more affordable, these would, I'd really recommend these. I absolutely love Essie nail polishes and my two favourite colours from the year have been Watermelon and After School Boy Blazer. Watermelon is like a nice wearable bright pink and After School Boy Blazer is a beautiful navy blue and these are the ones I've worn most this year. Revlon Vixen is one of my all time favourites, it's a deep berry maroon burgundy colour and it's really affordable, it's from Revlon and it's just a beautiful colour. I think that's what I'm wearing on my nails now with a bit of glitter and I feel like I could just always go back to this if I'm ever not sure what to paint on my nails 
eyes, this is the one I always go for. You guys know I love my mints, so I had to throw one in, and the Maybelline Superstay 7 Days in Mint for Life has been my favourite this year. I still love Essie Mint Candy Apple, but this one is really affordable, and the brush is really wide, the formula is great, and I love that the mint is slightly lighter, it looks a little bit white even from afar, it's just really pretty. I also went through a good few months of loving the Butter London um, Cotton Socks, I think it's called, which is the white nail polish. I seem to have misplaced it for this video, but I love wearing white on my nails and I think that's been something I've really enjoyed doing this year. And then of course, how could I not mention my Sechvit top coat? I wouldn't be able to paint my nails with all these beautiful colours without this. It dries so quickly, it makes the colour last for ages and it just gives that sort of gel finish, like thick, shiny gel finish. And I love this, I've just I've gone through bottles of this this year. Okay, so onto skincare, and I have quite a few favourites, but I think you guys are going to recognise all of them, because I've been talking about them all year on here and on my blog. So the first one is the Emma Hardy Merengue Cleansing Balm, and I've actually fallen in love with the Sarah Chapman Cleanser recently, but this has been the one that I've used most of this year. It comes in this kind of really impractical pot, but it's a really nice oily cleansing balm, and it takes all your makeup off in seconds. I use this with a muslin cloth, it's just so luxurious and amazing, and it's definitely one of my favourite cleansers. I love this. I've got, I think this is my second tub now, and they're quite big. For taking off waterproof makeup or waterproof mascara, I have been loving my Clarins Instant Eye Makeup Remover. It looks like this, um, and then you just shake it up, and you can use it on cotton wool, and it gets everything off. Seriously, if you're a waterproof mascara girl, this stuff is magic. Pixie Glow Tonic had its moment this year, thanks to Caroline Hirons, and this is an exfoliating toner, a bit like the Clarins one, but this is much more affordable, it's just harder to get hold of if you're not a Londoner. But you just use this on cotton wool and it exfoliates your face instead of using like a harsh scrub, which I don't really like using because it makes my skin quite red. So I've been using this all year, I'm still only like halfway through, I'm not really sure how, but you don't need much, you need like one or two pumps. So this is really good if you can get your hands on it. For serum, I've been using Hydroluron from Indeed Labs, which is one that you can get from Boots. It's just a basic serum and it does the job. I've used loads of fancy serums this year, but I always go back to this one because it feels really fresh and clean on your skin. It just works as like a sandwich filler to keep your moisturiser and everything sinking into your skin and it's got really good small packaging for travelling. I just love everything about this. This year I've become obsessed with oils. It's really been helping my skin, especially with the dehydration. And my favourite one of all time is Sarah Chapman Overnight Facial. It's a little bit expensive, but seriously, it's worth it. You get your space in K points and this stuff, my skin just like drinks it up. I put it on every night now. I was going to use it as like a two week baby treatment, but I use this every night. It's amazing. It smells good. It just feels so good on the skin. Whenever I've had little breakouts or pesky spots I always go back to the Origins Super Spot Remover. Now I don't think this is great for your skin because it does sometimes feel a bit stingy but if I have like a slightly raised spot I just dab a little bit of this on it and seriously the next morning I wake up and the spot's gone I just feel like this is magic. I don't have like really bad breakouts so I'm not sure if I'd recommend this if you do but if you just get the odd spot here and there this stuff has really been helping. Another toner I've fallen in love with is the Omaravitska, I can never say that, Queen of Hungry Mist and I just have the sample size for Cult Beauty but this is so nice, it's really expensive but if you just spray a little bit onto your hands and pat it in it just really kind of seals the skin after you do your whole cleansing and um, skincare routine. I just I love a good toner and this is definitely a beautiful one. I'm always going on about this mask so it won't be a surprise to any of you but the Origins Drink Up Intensive Overnight Mask has definitely made it into my 2013 favourites. It smells like peaches and apricot, it smells amazing and uh, you can either use this as a mask overnight or just kind of like as a night moisturiser and rubbing it in, it just works well both ways and it's really good for dry and dehydrated skin. A mask I don't have with me is the Aesop Parsley Seed Mask. I've actually finished my one and need to repurchase another one, but it's absolutely incredible. It's like a clay mask. It's not too harsh, you don't have to scrub it off your skin. It really helps my skin's feeling a bit spotty, and I absolutely love it. I use it about twice a week, and that's why I've finished. I've completely finished my tube and need to get another one. My day moisturiser has been the Origins Ginseng for most of the year, and I have nearly finished this now. There's literally hardly any left in there. And I, I love it. It smells like it smells like chocolate orange. It's really refreshing to use in the morning. I love the little pots that Origins moisturisers come in, and I just go through them all the time. I think I've used a few this year, but this one has been really nice, and I would definitely repurchase this. The last thing for skincare is my Kiehl's SPF 50, 
And I always talk about this. I, I, I don't really do it as part of my skincare routine. I put it on before I put my, my makeup on, but it is kind of skincare. And you can use this as a day moisturizer if you want to as well, because it is quite thick. But it's just a really high SPF. I like to wear it every day just to protect my skin. I know you don't have to, but I quite like it anyway, not just for kind of the UV rays or anything. There's a lot of pollution in London. And I just feel like it creates a barrier on my skin, which I really like. And it's just a really nice base to make up as well. So I really recommend this if you do want a good daily SPF. So that's everything from part one. I kind of breezed through that, but I've spoken about these products so much, I didn't want to bore you with the details. So don't forget to check back on Sunday for makeup, hair care, and extras. And there's quite a lot in that video. So come back on Sunday, subscribe so you don't miss it. And thank you so much for watching. Bye. Hi guys, welcome back to part two of my 2013 beauty favorites.